principle of work and energy. Let's consider a point that is moving on a curved path. Let's say this is the curved path. Let's expose all the forces that act on this particle which has a mass m. We have the sum of all forces along the tangential axis. The also we have the sum of all normal forces along the normal axis. And of course the resultant forces which is equals to F R also equal to the sum of all the forces. The particle travels from point, let's say this is S1 to point S2. And let's show the small differential displacement or distance rather. And this is its velocity. First, let's consider the equation of motion for the particle along the tangential direction. And that would be Ft is equals to m. A, T. Let's substitute the equivalent of tangential acceleration. We know that A, Ts is equals to V, dV, and this acceleration is tangential acceleration. So now our equation becomes Ft equals M, V, dV over ds and let's transfer ds on the left side that would be ft ds is equals to m v d v now let's integrate both sides and for the limits let's assume s1 and s2 for the distance or displacement ft ds n v1 and v2 for the velocity. We can integrate the right part of the equation. Let's continue. That would be s1, s2, ft, ds, which is equal to, of course, that would be 1 half m v2 squared minus 1 half m v1 squared. Note, however, that Summation of forces along tangential, looking at this diagram, is also equal to summation of forces cosine theta. Here, you just attach cosine theta on that and that becomes summation of tangential forces. And if we substitute this one, it becomes S1, S2, F cosine theta ds is equals to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Now the left part of the equation seems familiar and that is equal to the work done from point 1 to point 2. It is equal to work from point 1 to point 2 which is equals to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. This equation represents the principle of work and energy. The term on the left side is the sum of all the work done by all the forces that are acting on the particle as it moves from point S1 to point S2. While the two terms on the right side are the particles final and initial kinetic energy. Sometimes they are labeled as T sub 2 and T sub 1. Like work, kinetic energy is a scalar and it has a units of joule in metric system and foot pound in FPS or English system. But unlike work, which 
can be either positive or negative, take note that kinetic energy is always positive. The kinetic energy T is always positive, regardless of the direction of the particle. So the final expression of this form is often like this. T1 plus this is equals to T2. Which states that the particles, initial kinetic energy, plus the sum of all the work done by the tangential components of all the forces that are acting on the particle is equal to the particle's final kinetic energy. So that is the meaning of this equation. So is there any situation uh, in which uh, this equation does not apply to or, or what is the limitation of this uh, equation? And the answer to that question is it does not apply to any uh, body which is in motion which loses or increases its mass. Uh, for example, um, spaceship uh, or any uh, spacecraft. Uh, a spaceship as it uh, departs the Earth, no, uh, as it moves from the Earth to other ex uh, extraterrestrial objects such as the Moon, the, the spaceship loses a significant amount of mass. It loses a, a tons of kilogram of fuel, so the mass is not constant. And that poses a problem because this equation does not uh, take into account that consideration, uh, which is, uh, of course, the mass is changing. And you can verify that if you can trace uh, our derivation, the mass is constant, as you can see here. But of course, this equation applies to all types of forces. Uh, may it be uh, magnetic, electrical, uh, whatever type of forces that are acting on the body as long as the tangential component of that force is considered and it also applies to all types of motion whether it may be uh, constant motion or uniformly accelerated motion or none of those types of motion because the equations that the kinematic equation that we used in derivation is fundamental. So the only limit to this equation is that is that not apply to moving bodies whose mass is changing. Okay?